Good morning, church. Today we are on Story of Hope 7. Wow, this is already the, the last Story of Hope. This has flown by. Today's is Hope is Waiting for You. The story is in Luke 15, verses 11 through 32. If you turn there in your copy of the Word of God, we'll get started. This is the story of the prodigal son, but um, I think you could really put an S on the end of that, the story of the prodigal sons, because this story is about two sons, and we'll take a look at that after we read it. And he said, there was a man who had two sons. There it is, two sons. As the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. So this is the, the section about the younger son who had gone off and just lived life to its fullest and looked for um, satisfaction in the things of this world. And this was me when I was a young man. I, I was looking for satisfaction in all the things of the world. Just as you say, I lived in the moment. I lived for today. I worked hard all week so I could party hard on the weekend. And I just put all my hope in, in things of this world and not in God. I believed in God. But I didn't have faith in God, which is trust. So I didn't trust God. I wasn't saved at that point. I believed that he was real, but there are, I mean, the Bible says that, that Satan and the demons believe that God is real, but they don't follow him. So there's got to be more to belief and faith, and that's trust. You have to trust him. You have to, to follow his commandments, as the word says in so many different places. And once you do do that, once you do come to that point of humility and turn back to him, he's waiting on you and he's going to run to you. And he has compassion, just like in the story of the, um, the good Samaritan, compassion and mercy that God wants us to show to other people. He's waiting to show to us. So he's not just telling us to do things that he himself doesn't done, doesn't do. And then in verse 25, if we'll jump back in. Now his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, see, he's calling him his son. He's not even calling him his brother. How, how cold is that? Who has devoured your property with prostitutes? You killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad. For this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. So we see here, we're looking at someone and I can't relate to this because, like I told you, I'm the, I'm the first son. I'm the one who, who wavered, who went away, who did my own thing. But I, I think we're seeing here is someone who has, has been in church their whole life, who has um, always been a Christ follower, who has always served God, 
And like we say, just because we're a Christ follower doesn't mean that we don't sin. So this, this sin has risen up in him, this sin of jealousy, this sin of pride, of thinking that he's better than his brother, of being angry that his brother is getting rewarded the same way that he does. I think of the parable of the, the men working in the field and the one who had worked all day got paid the same thing as the one who only worked an hour. But he agreed to work for that amount, just like the other one agreed to work an hour for that amount. So, so he's angry about someone else being rewarded when he had agreed to do it for that price. So we can err on both sides here. We can be prideful in wanting to fulfill our needs here, or we can be prideful in being angry when someone who's led a sinful life comes to God. Um, there were three more verses that went along with this, and I can see both brothers in all three of these verses. Um, the verses were presented in the, the paper that I'm working off of, but I read a little bit farther, and what they're showing in the verses shows the first son. But when I, when I extended the verses a little bit longer and went a little bit further, I could also see the older brother in all these verses. It's just amazing how, how rich God's word is. So I'm going to read you three more verses. The first is 2 Peter 3, 9. And it says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So this is looking at the younger brother and how the father was patient with him and he waited on him and he wanted him to repent. If we go into verse 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth works that are done on it will be exposed. So we also see the older brother here that he doesn't need to be complacent and he doesn't need to be fulfilled in the things that he's done, but he needs to be vigilant. He needs to be looking out for when the father will come back. And then in one John, first John nine, I'm sorry, not one John nine in first John one nine, we see if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the, the younger brother. If we confess our sins, he confessed his sins. He came back to the father. He admitted that he was wrong. He realized his sin. And then if we look at verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So the older brother even went as far as to say, I've always obeyed all of your commands. Do you really think that this man has obeyed everything that his father has told him to do his entire life? So he's not telling the truth there. And if he's saying this, he's making his father a liar. So we can see both brothers again here in 1 John 1, 9 through 10. And then the last is Revelation 3, 20. And it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. So God is waiting for us, just like the father was waiting when the son came back. And... We have to go backwards in this passage to verse 15 to see the older brother. It says, I know your works. You are neither hot, neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you were lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich, and white garments, so that you may clothe yourself, and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen, and salve to anoint your eyes, so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. So this is the older brother. He doesn't see his own sin. He thinks he's fine. He's lukewarm. He's just casually going from day to day, being obedient, and not, not showing compassion for his brother who is lost and gone and not being merciful when his brother returns home. So in this passage here, guys, we see that, that hope is waiting for you. Um, if you are a follower of Christ, I implore you to, 
to go out and tell people the good news, to be compassionate and merciful, not to look on people with judgment, not to hate your brother who's struggling, but to have compassion and mercy. These are the ones that love their neighbor, as we see in the story of the Good Samaritan, the ones that show compassion and mercy. So don't be like the older brother in that fashion. And if you're not a follower of Christ, if you don't know him, then I implore you to turn to him. He is your father in heaven. He has the best things for you, your own desires, your own things that you want from this world are never going to fulfill. They're never going to complete or um, help you. Only God knows what's best for you. He's your creator. He's your father and he loves you. I will see you guys soon and we will start on something else. I'm going to figure out what that is and I love you guys.